All right. Good afternoon to all of you. To be very precise, though our country is a subtropical country and the most common diseases in these countries are infectious diseases and multiple events and complications arising along with them and after them, after the disease gets clinically over, there are multiple complications which are left behind and as a matter of fact, there are many complications which are multi-system, multi-organ involvement. There are complications which are other than non-infectious origin. It could be systemic, whether it's neurological, hematological, cardiopulmonary, renal, hepatic, and ultimately leading to one or more than one organ dysgenesis, dysfunction, or failure. And most importantly, in last 10 years, what the new science has realized that there is a lot of immunological and para-immunological phenomena associated or following the infectious diseases. As a matter of fact, the knowledge of infectious disease begins and ends with the most important topic of clinical immunology, which I have mentioned in my slide. To be very precise, I stuck to my alma mater, that's Kane Hospital and Postgraduate Institute, to learn clinical immunology and to become a professor in clinical immunology. As the word suggests, immunology is the science of our immunity towards all kind of insults which take place either as infection or otherwise to which the body's immunity responds either in a normal way or exaggerated way or abnormal way or sometimes in a below normal way and hence it is called different states of immunology. We know that HIV and AIDS is one of the stage where immunocompromised state is of paramount importance. But you will be surprised to know that it's not only infectious diseases, but also many chronic ailments like bad diabetes, chronic cardiovascular disorders, cirrhosis of liver, chronic renal failure, COPD, chronic diarrhea, protein losing enteropathy, or for that matter, chronic stress by itself, chronic smoker, chronic alcoholic, COPD, chronic bronchial asthma, etc., etc., are also immunocompromised state of affair. Hence, in these patients, the infectious diseases don't behave in the same manner as they do in a healthy individual. So the spectrum of this subject is very vast, very huge. And as per the academic sciences, the two subject of paramount importance of academic importance throughout the world in clinical and research practice is number one, oncology, and number two is infectious diseases with clinical immunology. To be very precise, last 10 years have been decade of viral diseases and now there is a big link between chronic viruses, slow growing viruses and immunogenesis or what we call pre-onco and pre-oncogenesis. So you can understand that we are going to deal with this subject which is so vast. Every word written here has its own meaning. The first subject which was introduced in the history was called infectious diseases, where an infectious agent was detected, a pathogen, and naturally the first one was bacteria. While today we have 39 
kinds of pathogens. So you can imagine if I start the names of these pathogens, you will be surprised that what are we dealing with. Then of course, as these diseases were more common in tropical and subtropical countries, hence the name came tropical medicine which is a part of infectious disease. Then there was a realization in American medical sciences that it is the urogenital science which is creating lot of sexual and sexually related and other diseases because of their exposure to so many other various factors and hence as a matter of fact HIV, STD and many associated diseases come under a super speciality subject of genitourinary medicine like you have urology for surgery the, the parallel word for medicine is genitourinary medicine naturally we started talking about medical virology which is huge subject there are 40 there are 43000 pages on medical virology which are written as part of the textbook in medical literature so you can imagine how big the subject could be and clinical immunology because this runs along with every kind of disease and suppose today we are going to talk about some diseases I will be trying to concentrate on some points of clinical importance naturally we understand in India when we talk not all in terms of generic but we talk tuberculosis we talk about hepatitis hepatitis has come practically A to Z A to G are known there is a another chapter and a sub I mean lecture on hepatitis syndrome so from A to G are all clinical hepatitis known of viral origin there are bacterial there are parasitological there are drug induced etc etc the autoimmunes etc which are there as a differential diagnosis when we have a lecture on hepatitis Pyrexias, we know that fever has been known in the history of medical science possibly as the first symptom which was noted in the history of medicine was fever. STDs and HIV AIDS which has been unfortunately dealt very badly in a very important country like India where we have handed over this subject on platter to dermatologists though you can make out that all these diseases though their entry could be from the sexual root but ultimately they are internal systemic medical multi-system multi-organ disorders and hence HIV AIDS is not a subject of dermatologist on the contrary it is a subject of infectious diseases and a practicing MD physician with interest in infectious diseases not otherwise now we go to uh, file one uh, may I ask you a very simple question uh, I have brought two topics today one is virology and second is you can say some common viral infections of present now virology what clinical virology slide is yeah just open it this is a subject which has about 45 slides simplest of the simplest I can talk or it does not suit then we directly go to fever and some diseases what suits you people it will be difficult also but it is better because this subject will not be touched by anybody anywhere in India this is sure everyone talks about virus but doesn't know ABCD of the virus so just go through the slides